Hello and welcome to a weekly Parsha Shear with the commentary of the Al Shekha College. And as usual, we managed to sneak in other commentators as well. This week, we'll have a bit of the Sasemis, uh, the Chopas Kaim, Rebellia Lapian, and others. I'm just trying to make this a bit brighter. Not working. Oh no, I'm going to hit the right button, which I profoundly didn't do. A little bit brighter. Yeah. Hello, and I hope everything's been good since last week. This year is sponsored for the last several years. Um, for the Yort site uh, of Shimon Fraser's mother, she's Fega Bas Shimon Hakoen, uh, and her Yort site is the 28th of Thomas, which I think is next Wednesday. So uh, I wanted to get the shear uh, ahead of the Yort site, it's not so good to say, which was uh, yesterday or the day before. So basically, um, uh, Shimon is uh, an old friend, and uh, his mother is Neshama indeed. I should have an aliyah through our learning of the al together. Uh, and for people who are not well, um, uh, the, the F, uh, if you remember from last week, my, my dear wife had surgery. Uh, she just got up from Shiva in the middle of the Shiva, a very interesting psak that she was sitting Shiva for her late mother, um, and on the fourth day, she was scheduled to have um, a, a second complete knee replacement operation. And they, we asked the Shaila, and the sack was, the ruling was, that as she would, in delaying it, if she did delay the operation, have to extend the amount of extreme pain that she's in, or she was in, um, by maybe up to two months, then that suspended or cancelled the Sheba. So on the fourth day after the Sheba, my wife went into what's called the hospital for special surgery over in Manhattan and had the surgery, which was Baruch Hashem, uh, very successful which is not nearly in as much pain this time she was last, so that's very interesting. However, she's still in pain and she still has a, a lot of recovery to do. So for my dear wife, Ita Rivka Basima Esther, um, we hope that the, the our, our prayers and our discuss of our learning together should help her recovery to be complete and speedy. Um, Malka Rochel Bas Shina Manucha, who is recovering from surgery as well, should have a Rafal Shalema. Rafal Chai Ben Sor. One of my favorite people on the planet, who those who've been listening to the Shia regularly will know, has been uh, struggling with an illness for, for many years, and he should have a complete Fushalima. And Oria Chaim ben uh, Hana Yehudis, um, who uh, is the little boy that we may, we've also been dabbling for in saying the Shia and his skis for a long time, who's waiting for a transplant. Uh, he should have uh, the refu that he needs, the donor should be found. Uh, speedily, and uh, his parents and grandparents should uh, only know Simcha from this little child from that one. Okay, oh, that was quite a lot. Uh, so, uh, this week's Parsha, uh, Pinkas, so much to say with Parsha's Pinkas, but as you know, this is the second year we've been recording these sharing uh, and posting them on Torah anytime and on my YouTube channel. So, having said that, um, I'm trying to read parts of the al that I've not dipped into before and therefore not shared before. And so what can we talk about this week's Parsha? Now, if you've been with me for the last few weeks, the theme that I've been trying to pursue is the leadership, um, an examination, uh, not very deep examination, but an examination of the leadership of Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, in Parsha Skokas, if you remember from a few weeks ago, the Svas Emis said something interesting. There is the the, one of the shiras, one of the songs the Jewish people sang in praise of Hashem, having um, been successful, uh, was an ambush and they're about to be attacked. And they sang a shira, but it says, Oz Yoshi Yisrael. Then the Jewish people sang a song um, in praise of God. And it doesn't say Oz Yoshi and Moshe of Yisrael. And Moshe is absent from that song. And the Svasem has said an incredibly interesting thing. He said that Moshe, the refusal of Hashem to allow Moshe Rabbeinu to lead the Jewish people into the land of Israel, which of course is related to him hitting the rock instead of speaking the rock, something we did discuss in a previous, uh, a previous podcast or shir, whatever these things are called these days. But more than that, he said, Moshe Rabbeinu is omitted from this because his level of leadership was now effectively inappropriate, not applicable to Klal Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu, who is, of course, on the highest level, but now there's the concept of Yerudah Zadaris. From the moment that we left Mount Sinai, spiritually we go down. 
Um, and this is a moment when we, or that the moment, when it's signaled most clearly that Moshe Rabbeinu, his time as leader of Israel is coming to an end. Now, in this week's Parsha, and the part that I would like to look at, for us to look at, you'll find this on the meat bar cough sign, if you've got your art scroll there, uh, chapter 27, and it starts in, in verse 12, when Moshe Rabbeinu, as we'll see in a second, really hopes that despite what Hashem had said to him, that by hitting the rock instead of speaking to the rock and not making the key to Hashem that I, de I demanded of you, then you're not leading the Jewish people into the land of Israel. Moshe kind of hopes, we'll explore this in a second, that Hashem might have changed his mind. Um, that's not, incidentally, uh, a concept which is alien to Judaism. Hashem can, inverted commas, it's an entire share in this one, right, uh, seem to change his mind. We can change Hashem's mind. That's what Yom Kippur is all about, after all. The scales can be perfectly balanced, our behavior positive and negative through the year, and one person, one person can come along, maybe even a little person, a seemingly insignificant person, if there is such a thing, when we're talking about Jews, and tip the scales positively or negatively after all, and because whose name is written at the beginning of the Pasha with the little Yud, uh, was a little Yud, he was a little Jew, and is not renowned before this incident for greatness, but sometimes it's uh, the moment in a person's life when he discovers greatness, uh, which he never anticipated that he could have uh, stood up to and, uh, and fulfilled that role that defines him. Okay, so basically, uh, this is Moshe's hope for the Shem will uh, have maybe the Midas of Rachamim, the character of Rachamim, which so defines the Shem has, as it were, dominated the debate in heaven, and now he's going to allow Moshe to come in. And certainly Moshe is going to try and activate that, as we'll see in a second. But Hashem says, no, the transition is going to be complete, and it, the leadership of the Jewish people is going to now transfer to Yeshua. And that's really the, the area of the Torah that I'd like to, to focus on. Now, the story is well known, but let's uh, read a few of the Pesukim. Um, and uh, so here we go. Uh, it's, as I said, it's chapter 12. If you've got an art scroll there, I usually do. Um, I've got this one with a linear Rashi, which somebody very kindly donated. Um, so I had a look into it, find it quite good. So here we go. So it says, Vayomer Hashem El Moshe. This is again 27, verse 12. Vayomer Hashem El Moshe. Oh, this is before then was the story of the Benos Slovkot, the daughter of Slovkot, whose father had died, there was no son, um, no natural transition of property from the father to the next generation. The daughter said, Well, okay, it's no sons, but there are daughters. And Moshe inquires what Hashem's view of this is. And he says that tells him, yes, it's perfectly okay, and the daughter should inherit um, in this case, and so then, with inheritance in mind, which is what we're going to be talking about, really, um, Moshe then, is, 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 uh, Hashem says, Ale el har ha go to the top of the mountain of, mountain of Aravim, uh, and see the land of Israel, which I'm giving to the Jewish people. Now, Moshe Rabbeinu desperately wants to lead the Jewish people into the land of Israel, and Hashem says, no, go up to the top of this mountain, and I'll show you the land of Israel. Uh, of course, as something Rabbi Dessler uh, points out, uh, this doesn't make any sense. No matter where, if I remember rightly, it was the southeast of Israel, um, no matter how high the mountain is, you can't see the whole of Israel. Oh, look, there's Tel Aviv, there's Haifa, there's the Lebanese border. Uh, but of course, what does it mean that it's not a huge country, Israel? But certainly no, no human eye could show you the whole of Israel, but it was a miracle. Um, to which uh, Rabbi Desta asks, well, in that case, why does he have to go to the top of the mountain? And the answer is, whenever a very important principle, maybe for another share, whenever Hashem wants to do a miracle, in almost every case, um, the Exodus from Egypt would be an exception, he always uh, factors in or weaves into the fabric of the miracle threads which would allow it to be explained away as a natural phenomenon for those who don't want to go delve deeply. Um, and so same here. How did Moshe see the land of Israel? He went to the top of the mountain. As I keep saying, using the American phrase I have come to be very fond of, duh, you just can't see the whole of the land of Israel from any mountain top. Uh, no, but it's telling you that it was a, a, a repetition of this phenomenon. It's to allow people who don't want to think the opportunity to not think. Uh, part of Judaism's challenge is to overcome the inclination not to think. 
Judaism won't seem to think. Anyway, Vigam Hashem El Moshe Al El Hora Rav and Gutta Top of this mountain has a re is or it's a share in the Nasekil of Israel. Thanks, Posse Re Isi, I serve in his after is El Mecha. And you shall see it, and you will be gathered to your people. So you've a missing for you're going to pass away. Um, Gam Ato Kasher Nesaf Aaron Achicha. And you will die the same way that Aaron died, in the same format. And as I think I did mention previously, the Rambam says, if I remember in Moreh Nevuchim, that the only three people reached the spiritual level to die by what's known as the kiss of Hashem is Borach. That was Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam. It says ex explicitly with Moshe and Aaron, but of course it'd be inappropriate to, to suggest God kissing a woman. All sorts of uh, other theologies uh, start to get involved um, and uh, imagery, which is not appropriate. In Judaism, and therefore, but she also died by the kiss of Hashem. After all, Hashem blew the soul of a person into through the lips into automation. He, as it were, painlessly and gently removes it in the same way. Okay, so that's how. So now he's being told he's going to die. Kasher Marisim P Midbat Sin Marabas because Marisim P. Interesting. Don't time to go into this, but because you rebel, let's say against me, Amidbar Tzin, but Mariva, Ha'ida, like Dishena, but Maim, Leinehem, you didn't sanctify my name as I told you to do. To do by the peed speaking to the rock, we talked about that, which should have transferred it into a hole in space with water coming through it. Instead, you had you hit it. Me, Mariva, Kodesh, Amidbar Tzin, or the water uh, before the rise, and that was the water I'm talking about. But it's got Kadesh and Amidbar Tzin. Fine. Okay, so the reason you're not getting in is because you didn't do that Kiddush Hashem required. Now, with that as the statement of God, um, then at that point, they, we really start to laser focus on the theme that we're going to explore. Moshe, uh, sorry, but Yedabra Moshe El Hashem Lemur. And Hashem speaks to, to Hashem to say, of course, this is an Asha question, um, but Rashi asked it too this week. And Hashem, sorry, Moshe, Moshe says, speaks to Hashem, lay more to say, to say what? To say, am I going to get in? Uh, see, the Moshe's uh, mistake in hitting the rock ultimately was not bad enough to keep him out of the land of Israel. That's why, as he, Moshe himself recalls, that Hashem says to him later on in Devorim, in the book of Devorim, when he's recalling this whole incident, I prayed hundreds, thousands of times for Hashem to rescind the decree against me, and Hashem says, don't ask me even one more time. The implication being, had he asked him one more time, that would have been sufficient for, as it were, the log jam to be broken, and, um, and uh, for him to be able to get into the land of Israel. Fine. You've got Hashem Elokei Haruchas. No, now we're going into Al Shuk Tevri. You've got Hashem Elokei Haruchas Lekol Boser. So, if that's the case, he's not going in. Or we'll see what he's saying. Um, so please tell me that well, Hashem should. Now he seems to be giving advice to Hashem. That you've got Hashem. Hashem should appoint Elokei Haruchas as the God of Ruchos, uh, spirits, um, um, the Kol Boser of all flesh. God, the God of all spirits, all flesh. Ish a man, a shall Eda, to be on the congregation. So if I'm going to die, appoint a man to be in charge of the whole congregation. A share Yates Lifnehem, who will go out before them, but a share Yova Lifnehem, and who will come in, um, or oh, Yova Lifnehem, but who will uh, come in before them. But a share Yotzeem, who will take them out. And bring them in. Veloti adas Hashem, and will not be the congregation of Hashem. Katzayin be like a sheep. Hashem in lahem roye without a shepherd. V'yam Hashem amosh. Hashem says to Moshe, "Kach v'cho es Yeshua." Well, good idea. Take Yeshua. Bin Nun. Hashem I'm Ish Hashem ruach boy, the man who's got a ruach in him. Um. And put your hand, your uh, and lean your hand over upon him. And bring him in front of Allah Zarkon. And in other words, he sure is going to be the next leader of the Talmud and not you, and not you. So there's a couple of Rashi's I think we have to look at before we um, start delving into the Al Sheikh, and we'll look at three or four of his questions, and then we'll be able to get a feel of how the Al Sheikh sees this, and he's going to take us into areas which. Rashi hints at, but doesn't uh, uh, choose to fully develop in his commentary uh, here.
And so, Posuk 15, what was Posuk 15? We said Tezvov, that was, let Hashem appoint a man. So, Yedab Moshe El Hashem, so Moshe says uh, to Hashem, please let me know um, what should, uh, 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 what, who's going to be appointed. So it says Rashi, this shows you the greatness and the praise of Tzadikim. Um, when they're about to be Niftar, about to pass away, then Manichin Sorchon, Oiskin They don't in their prayers to Hashem address their desires, their wants, or their requirements, but rather their total focus now shifts to the requirement of the Jewish people, which is leadership. If I'm going to go, who's going to look after my children, or rather your children, Hashem, but my flock? Are going to be without a shepherd if me, the shepherd of Paul Israel, is going. Okay, then um, pos- Rashi in Posuk 16, Yifkud Hashem, may Hashem appoint Hashem, who is the God of the Ruchais, we'll come back to that, came in Shashama Moshe. When Moshe heard, Shomer Lo Mokham Hashem said to him, Hey, Nach the Slofkad the whole thought thing, Tain, sorry, Tain, gives the inheritance of Slavkod, whom I mentioned before, the man who, who died without any male children, male children, yes, that makes sense, um, to, um, to take the inheritance. Then he thought to himself, Omri said, um, uh, sh- sh- I, 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 the time's now come that I should worry about my inheritance. Um, and, uh, and therefore, uh, and my own family, she issued Bonai Eskindolosi, that my children should inherit my greatness. Now, this is intriguing. So here, according to Rashi, what Moshe meant here, um, when you've got Hashem, it's because of the juxtaposition between the two uh, episodes in the Torah, the, the inheritance of the daughters of Slavkov. Now that, that triggered and Moshe being a, a concern for his own uh, legacy, and the inheritance he passed to his children, and he said he, he assumed, Moshe assumed, that the legacy and the transference of leadership would go from father to son, or sons in this case, or it's not have to be one son, uh, and, to, and, and would pass through the generations. And this, of course, is something that uh, Judaism is very, very sensitive to, and uh, not a great fan of, um, but we'll see more of that in a second. But Moshe seems to assume, and obviously if he assumed it, of course, when it comes to your own family, as Rabbi Dessa says in regards to Abraham Avino, the reason he sent Eliezer to go and find a bride for Yitzchak and why he didn't go himself is because he knew, and this is the language of Rabbi Dessa, listen to this, is very, very strong. Abraham Avino, the great Abraham Avino, knew that when it came to his own family, he was not the great Abraham Avino. Uh, everybody is remarkably biased in favor of their own children, and rightly so. Um, but that's why when it comes to your own children, you need an outside a perspective, you need a rabbi or Rebison to advise you what they should do. Very, very often, because we love our children so much, we're the last possible person to deal with their issues and we need outside guidance and, uh, and perspective. Anyway, so therefore, uh, I'm not going to uh, 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 deal with my own stuff. She is Shani Bona Eskadot. I mean, my children should inherit my high position. Hashem said to him, and of course, he's quoting a medrash here, no, no, I've already dealt with this. I've, I've dealt with this matter. Lo kach also Your solution, your anticipation or expectation is not what I've got in mind. Rather, uh, Yeshua. The person who is appropriate to be the next king of the Jewish people is Yeshua. Little scar shim and he should take the reward, it's justified for him to take the reward of all the work that he'd done. As Shalom Mosh Mitach Oil, as the Pesach said earlier, when it's referring to Yeshua, then it said, what about him? Um, this is, you'll find this in, um, in Shemais, in Lama Gimel 33 in verse 11, um, that Moshe was a nar, a young man, even though he was 54, by the way. It was a young man, Lo Yomish Mitach Oil, he never let Moshe Rabbeinu aside. He, he just spent his whole time uh, learning Moshe Rabbeinu's Torah, absorbing uh, the, uh, the apprentice, absorbing the craft of Torah from the, uh, the, the great uh, great master, Moshe Rabbeinu. And therefore, says, says Hashem, you are anticipating that I might go to your children? No. It's going to your apprentice, um, to your disciple, and that, of course, is going to be, uh, is going to be Yeshua. And he says, he goes further, 
And that's what Shomash Omar, uh, and that's what Shlomo Melech says uh, when he famously says, uh, you know, the person who guards the fig tree, Yochel um, Priya, he should have the reward of eating its fruit. Um, so, uh, and I think that's in Kehanas, if I remember rightly, but let me just see. Uh, I've got a note for you here. No, it's not in Kehanas. It's in Mishli. It's in Mishli Proverbs, and that's 2718. So, um, the same idea. It's the person who, as it were, is the, the apprentice, and not the person who is the genetic inheritor, but who is the inheritor by choice, by um, uh, attention, attraction, um, and uh, assiduously pursuing his master's teaching. That's the person who carries the Torah into the next generation. But that is what Rashi says. We've been becoming back to that, Rashi, because that critically is the issue which I, I'd like to pursue in today's year. Um, the fact that Torah is not an inheritance, it not automatically passes, often does, but we'll see there are conditions, only certain conditions have to be made. In other words, if the children fulfill their role as the disciple of the father, the disciple of the father, in the same way as Yeshua did, then of course the children can, can inherit that role. You very often find, find that in rabbinic dynasties, in the Hasidic dynasties, uh, and also in yeshivas. A Rosh Hashim's son will also become the Rosh, my Rosh Hashim, which believe Gurubitz. It's like a Tzadik Kodesh Rav Rocha, his son, the Havdil Rav of Rome Gurubitz, uh, the Gon Rav of Rome Gurubitz, uh, Shirai, the enormous uh, privilege of sitting for two years, um, was uh, is now the Rosh Hashim of, of Gateshead. And very, very often that happens, but it's not necessarily so. In fact, some of the greatest enemies of the Jewish people or it came from the greatest yichus, from the greatest lineage, but didn't carry that forward, didn't walk in the, the footsteps of, of their parents, um, and therefore uh, lost that connection. So there's no, it's not an automatic thing, and we'll see why not in, in a second. But, but I think as it's, uh, this year is meant to be an Oshosh year, we could look at three questions I think he asks him, and then we'll see exactly uh, where we go from there. So, Open my Alshech uh, to the page, which I have marked previously. And uh, here are, uh, according to my notes that I wrote before, in the last two hours, which apparently this year, just showing off um, or honoring you. Um, a, then it is uh, questions two, three, and five we're going to look at. Of how many? Uh, of questions, about 20. So we'll just do three. Okay, we asked for an, for, uh, 20 questions. I was looking at. Um, number two, I'm missing out number one, so forgive me, you can, if you've got one, you can look at all the questions yourself. Omro uh, Ruchis. So you must know this idea of, which we said before, when Moshe is speaking to Hashem, and then what does he say to him? Beit Hashem, Moshe El Hashem, you've got Hashem, Elokei Ruchis, then the God of the Spirit, Haruchis. Omro Elokei Ruchis, the Kol Bosser. Who is the Elke Haruchis, the spirit of all love and flesh, um, Ki Haroi Yama Elke Ruchis. So he is, the Alshach wants to know why it says that, that God is the God of the spirits of all flesh instead of spirits of all flesh. God of spirits of all flesh. The spirits of all flesh. It, that's more in Hebrew, would stand out for them and, and, sounds, and sounds stronger than it does in English. Next question, which is his number three. He says the whole thing is bizarre. If Moshe Rabbeinu is, ask, is asking, hmm, Hashem, you should appoint a man, um, but Moshe Rabbeinu knows who the man is. The story previously, we all know the story, but we borrow Eldad and Medad, uh, who prophesy. Uh, it, it, prophesy is not something they decided to do. It's God sends, chooses them at that moment to pronounce a message. It can be just to the prophet himself, as the Rambam says, to another prophet, to a group of people, or to the whole Jewish people. This is to the whole Jewish people, which says, what was their prophecy? And Moshe is going to die, and Yeshua is going to lead the Jewish people into the land of Israel. So this is not something like, so why is it, Hashem, if you're, if you're going to do this, why don't you appoint one man? I've already told you one man. Through Eldon and Medad, I've made it quite clear that Eldon and Medad are going to be telling the Jewish people that it's going to be Yeshua, and he's going to carry the Jewish people into the, the land of Israel. Gihari, may I elder and is not been from the moment the elder made that prophesied in the camp. Yodomo, Shamosh, and you find well, can you show who are Machus as the trial lords? The Yeshua was the one that Shem had selected to bring the Jewish people into the land of Israel. Cain, Zaisa, Yisah, and Vosom. That was their prophecy. You look in Bamidbar Yudalaf and Kavog, you'll find that there.
Um, so why is he affecting not to know and actually going on to make suggestions about who the person could be, i.e. me, maybe I could carry on, maybe your Rachamim will be Miss Eurer, will be um, awakened and let me off the, the sentence of banishment from the land of Israel, uh, and I could leave them. So that's the... Um, and it does seem a bit strange that he's actually giving advice to Hashem. Hashem doesn't need advice. Okay, and I think we wanted to look at him. Um, um, now, this is a very interesting observation, which you really need the eyes of the Alshu to spot. But if we go back to the Posit for just a second, and if you've got it in front of you, you'll see that very, very clearly. But there are two very similar expressions here, but they're going to be critical to understand exactly what's going on with Moshe Rabbeinu. So here he says, again, from the top, the Yama Hashem, that's Posit 12, the Yama Hashem al Moshe Ali al Hara, Rabbi, oh, sorry, not Paul 12, my mistake, do apologize. Vidaber, um, Posit uh, 15. Vidaber Moshe. El Hashem Lemor, and Moshe speaks to Hashem to ask him to say, let him know what's going on, who should be appointed. Nifgad Hashem, Elkei Haruchais, Le Hashem, who is the Elkei Haruchos Elkei Bosa, the God of the Spirit um, of all men, of all flesh rather, uh, should appoint Ish Al Ha'eda, a man on the Ada, on the congregation. Ada, the Hebrew word for congregation. Adas or Ada, same word. Uh, Adas, Ada. Asher Yatz Lifnem will go before them, Asher Yav Lifnem, and all that stuff, go and, 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 and bring them forth, Asher Yatziyam, bring them up, Asher Yavim, and bring them in. Baloti Adas Hashem. And now instead of saying the Ada, which it referred to before, and, uh, it should say again, and the congregation won't be without a shepherd. But it says that the congregation of God won't be before, right? I, without a shepherd. So there, that's that's the problem. The end of the Apostle Yatziyam, the Apostle, sorry. As a positive uh, sorry, Tesain 16, it says the word Ada, but when it refers to it again, it says the Ada of Hashem, Adas, um, uh, Adas uh, Hashem, I think it is, I don't know, <laughs> um, Adas Hashem, the congregation of God. So, why does it change it? So, that's really what we're going to look at. And if I pass this over here, check the clock, I'm trying, as some of you requested, to keep this to 40 minutes. So. Try my best here. Um, that's not going to work. Uh, but anyway, so basically, very, very quickly, look at the clock, pressure completely on. Um, he says the following thing. When Moshe sees that Hashem sends out to the mountain to see uh, the land of Israel, he kind of thinks that this is a moment, and that's uh, a Jewish thought, a moment of rachamim, a moment of Hashem's pity. And therefore he thought, maybe I could extend it. As it's the case, as I said before, that his crime is not su sufficient to keep him out. Ultimately, don't ask me one more time, because one more time I'll have to open the door to you. And he thinks that maybe this is the time to let him in. So that's why he petitions here. Uh, maybe Hashem will, will change his mind, and I'll be able to lead the Jewish people uh, into the land of Israel. So, but Moshe makes his argument now uh, to gain that purpose, to gain that ambition by invoking his concern for the Jewish people. And that's why it's Adas Yisrael. Don't, don't let the Jewish people be like, uh, like a, a flock without a shepherd. Now, now we get into interesting stuff. Why do you say this God of all spirits? And the answer is Ki Nefesh Moshe Rabbein Alav Shalom Tiyas Akalilas Kol Kolos Shishim Ravu Yisrael now, this is pure Kabbalah. Um, and I, I'm going to take you back even further. Uh, when the first human being who, who was created was, of course, it's something called Odom. Every soul that came into the world, including mine and including yours, came from uh, Odom Arushim. He was, as it were, his soul was a super soul. Uh, and had he not, well, the world would have gone a different direction. But as a consequence of the choices he made, then there's going to be many, many generations. And each soul is, as it were, comes from that soul of, of automation. So as it were, it's like a forest. Um, and uh, the, he was the super seed, which seeded an entire forest. But in the tree of humanity, if you, the family tree of humanity, imagine various limbs uh, going off in different directions, different peoples, etc. The limb, or he's gonna use the, the, the muscle of the roots, 
of the, the Jewish people are, is Moshe Rabbeinu. Apparently, uh, as Adam was to the whole humanity, Moshe was to the Jewish people. All Jewish souls, as it were, come through him, or from him even. Um, and so, uh, I'll read you a little bit more. Uh, but the, the, the souls of all 600,000 Jews that stood in Mount Sinai all had their roots within Moshe. And that means to say that they're like branches, that each one is a branch or a twig, etc., which are springing out from Moshe Rabbeinu. That's why it says, Hanashamos, the Nashamos that he's, uh, Hanafoshes, sorry, the Nashamos, the Nashamos that he's talking about are these 600,000. What he's saying is that it could be that as, and, and that really is what um, uh, uh, Svasemus was hinting at before, there's a point of transition from one to the other. And Moshe Rabbeinu feels that, but who could be like me? And that's not false modesty. You see, the, the question we answered before, why does he say a, 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 the congregation, and a das Israel? He says this referring to two types of Jews. Well, the ordinary Jews. And indeed, many, many Jews could reach, you know, a level of greatness to inspire or to lead ordinary Jews. But a das Israel is the Jews at the highest spiritual level. Who can we find who can inspire both? who could lead both, somebody would have to encompass both. And that's only me, and that is indeed true, as the, as the, as the Ashok says, that's completely true. And that's what's in his heart. So therefore, as only I can occupy that role, says Moshe, and are my concern is, as Rashi points out, ultimately for the Jewish people, then maybe on the basis of, for them, if not for me, you'll let me lead the Jewish people into the land of Israel. To which, the Lord has again, Hashem says, no, I have a different plan. But in saying he's got a different plan, and the plan is Yeshua, as we saw in Rashi before, opens up an incomple a completely an incredible new uh, uh, idea, uh, an important idea, a critical idea, and that is that there could be people like the, the Rosh Hashiva son, it's a central city, Rabbi's son, who steps into the roles of, the, of his father, but only if he walks in the footsteps of the father, or nearly in the footsteps of the father. After all, he ha has his own individuality as well. A Yitzchak wasn't a Rom, and Yaakov wasn't Yitzchak. They walked in the same path as a father, but slightly different gait. Avram was Chesed, and Yitzchak was Gevura, fear of God, and Yaakov was Torah and Emes, and these ideas, but they're all going in the same direction, but walking with a slightly different uh, gait, as I said before. So that's the point. Hashem turns around and says, you think that there has to be somebody from your family. You are concerned for the future of the Jewish people. You feel there's got to be somebody, and you're right, who can inspire the ordinary or the, great, or the greatest of the world, and you think it's only you. It's not. But the thing that makes it not is Yeshua is the disciple. This is astonishing. The, the, it's not the genetics that carry Moshe Rabbeinu forward to the next generation. It's the disciple, it's the apprentice who studied copies and changes himself to become, as it were, like the master. Because you can be genetically like the, the, the father, you can look like him and be a very, very different person. But you can make yourself look like the person. I, also, I said a very old friend in Manchester, he's the head of the Babbage there, uh, Abram Jaffe, um, uh, Shalita, and I once said to him, uh, because he looks very much like the Lubav Sharebi, his, his Rebbe. Uh, and I said to him once, you know, if you get me saying, uh, so many Lubav Sharebi look like the Rebbe, very round eyes, and they you have know, very distinctive features. And uh, he said, no, it's, it's a well-known phenomenon. That's uh, something of great, great honor in, in Chabad Hasidus, if you're a host, it actually looks like the Rebbe. But, I, you know, I'm not sure if, uh, if you go back familiarly, that it's just a coincidence, but it's almost as if you do change to resemble the Rebbe, but if not in physical exterior appearance, but certainly in spiritual appearance. Yeshua is the person that's going to carry it forward, and not, and not uh, my own children, his own children. Interesting stuff. And that's the answer. Okay. Um, and this is a concept uh, which we have, uh, if I hate, if you, please don't uh, spread this too much, but uh, you will have heard probably there is a a film called Fiddler on the Roof with a song, famous song called Sunrise Sunset. Well, just to uh, make you feel 
uh, hopefully uh, good about this. Um, that is, of course, a verse from Cahelis and right in the first uh, uh, chapter of Cahelis in verse five, sunrise, sunset. But when Chazal talk about sunrise, sunset, they say the following, of course, famous thing, that no sun sets, the sun of a tzaddik who illuminates the Jewish people doesn't go down until another one starts to rise. Uh, Hashem never leaves the Jewish people without the shepherd that can guide both the greatest and the most ordinary, um, as indeed he expressed to Moshe Rabbeinu, who had exactly that fear. Yeshua is going to take that role, and that is through his own choice. There is a, a, a tremendously interesting uh, a, a point about that, because of the Gomorrah, when it talks about it, uh, this is in, I'm trying to remember, yeah, it's in Kedushan, and it is in um, 72b, um, and you'll find there that it says the drosha, the explanation of the sunrise, sunset, where it means, was referenced at Tzadik, and says Rabbi Kiva's son did not, for Rabbi Kiva's life didn't end, um, or his son didn't go down uh, until um, the, the, uh, the Rebbe's son, um, the soul of Rebbe rose. So Rabbi Kiva, when he passed, went down, his sun set, the sunrise of Rebbe, Rebbe began. And this idea is really tremendously uh, astonishing, the sunrise. I uh, have here a beautiful, a beautifully produced, uh, in every sense, Rabbi Beryl Weinhoff, the great privilege of, of knowing um, and admiring very, very much. He wrote a wonderful book called The Oral Law of Sinai. He wrote many, many books, of course, all beautifully produced. And, and in it, Robert, it's a history of the of the of the Mishra, the rabbis of the Mishra, etc. Um, and when he talks about Rabbi Kiva, as the other is talking about, he says the following thing. Um, this is on page ninety three. I think it's worth reading to, and I hope he's doing very well. In the chain of the oral law that extended from Moshe to Ezra and to Hilo to Rabbi Yochanan and Ben Zakkai and to Rabbi Ozer and Rabbi Shua, Rabbi Kiva became the unbreakable link hmm. binding Israel to Sinai and to the covenant of Tyre. That's more than all of the great men of the Mishnah. He became the primary symbol of Tyre, greatness, and of love of the Jewish people. Hmm, interesting. Uh, and of all mankind. It is not by chance that when Moshe asked God, so to speak, why there were crowns being attached to the letters of the Tyre, as the Gemara and Benoches, God of Kaptes, which we spoke about recently, why there were crowns being attached to the letters of the Tyre, the reply he received was that Rabbi Kim would someday, someday use them to interpret the Tyre. It is no exaggeration that Rabbi Kiva is himself the crown on the letters of the Torah and of all the Jewish people of all the ages. Interesting. Tradition compares Rabbi Kiva's long and eventful lifespan to that of Moshe Rabbeinu. I don't think he's going to say that, um, but uh, anyway, I'll just let me see. Uh, and indeed, some Kabbalistic sources say he was a, a reincarnation of Moshe Rabbeinu. And the three stages of the life of Moshe Rabbeinu, 40 years Egyptian prince, next 40 years shepherd of Yisrael, shepherd being a euphemism for somebody who was growing spiritually to become a a uh, prophet, uh, and the last 40 years, the leader of the Jewish people, Rabbi Kiva's life, 40 years, hater of uh, Orthodox Jewry, uh, religious Jewry, um, said that if he saw a, a religious Jew, he would bite them the way that he, not the way a dog bites that only tears flesh, but the way a donkey bites that tears flesh and the bone. Uh, and then the next year, he uh, stage, like Moshe, he goes and trains himself and becomes the great leader of the Jewish people. In the last 40 years, then he becomes the leader of the Jewish people. Um, anyway, so it also suggests that he was a convert, the more it says he was a convert, uh, or at least from a family of converts, for he's reported in the Talmud to be a descendant of Cicero, the Canaanite uh, general slain by Yal, the, the, the Shafetus, the prophetess. But the, so the interesting thing is astonishing that Rabbi Kiva, who's the, the critical link, uh, or a critical link in the line of the transition of the Torah, and according to him in his beautiful language, uh, the critical link and Moshe was, right himself said there was nobody as great as, as Rabbi Kiva. But Rabbi Kiva is only one of very, very many uh, of the uh, of the Tanaim and the Marayim who appear in the Talmud who came from non-Jewish backgrounds and yet became critical links. So you can hardly say it's genetic. In fact, the, the genetic background is anything uh, less than uh, stellar. It's something to be quite embarrassed about. And yet he went on to become the great Rabbi Kiva. So it's not a question of what your yikas is. My, one of my great teachers from Mordechai Miller of Gates said famously pointed out that, um, uh, that yikas is like a row of zeros. Yikas, your lineage, your uh, uh, great uh, family tree. It's like a row of zeros. Imagine zero, zero, zero. 
nothing until you put one in front of you. Put one in front of it, then it would become a, a billion, a trillion, a huge, a huge number. But you've got to put that one in front of it. The critical choice for greatness, or for transition of greatness, is to pass it on to the person who's chosen to become the echo or the mirror of the of the, the leader of the last generation. Interesting idea. Um, one last idea. I, I, I'm running out of time as usual. I'm kind of a bit uncomfortable keeping you longer than I tried to promise you. I think I'm definitely going to go out of it. Um, but anyway, uh, here uh, there is a story, and there's a beautiful cipher called Michel Ovas and his son Piki Ovas. And there's a story here about the Hobbit's Kind. Uh, the Hobbit's Kind, uh, famously, he said um, that, uh, or told a true story about himself, when he printed his form, of course, Commissioner Brewer was the first one, I think. Um, then he used to go around selling them from place to place. He came to a certain town, he came to the little inn uh, that he always stayed in, and he knocked on the door, and uh, they were completely full. There was no way they could get in. So he said that, well, it would make any difference to the fact that the, the inn was full, and or, or, or the reason they couldn't take him. And he said, but my, my father used to live here, my grandfather used to live my great-grandfather used to live here. Well, any difference whatsoever. We're full. The door's locked and we ain't opening it to you. So what is the strategy you should follow? Then you go somewhere else, which of course is what he did. Why did he use, and of course I mean, this is himself speaking, when he uses that muscle, what did he use the muscle to illustrate? So I'll read this bit to you because I think it's excellent. Uh, as Bechavos Chaim was going about selling his books, the Torah itself, and, and, and needed a place to stay, the Torah itself needs a place to stay. Uh, it needs a host, okay? Um, so, and, and the Torah always looks for a new host. Generations come, generations go. Sunrise, sunset. So where is the Torah going to find a place when all the doors are slammed shut in, in the lands of the West? But that's the way, that's the way of Jewish history. That's how Jewish history works. He bowled a shom, uh, shom if they may shona, the hekish aladosis. You come to a place which for hundreds of years the doors were open to you, and you bang loudly in the door. But a new appeal, haim lo hachreini hachreini ba tamid makami, and you're not letting me. You're not letting me in. But hasn't this always been my place? Haim lo azu Apollo can Rashi. Isn't this where Rashi lived? Uh, Baliatosis and the Baliatosis lived, the Marami Rottenberg lived, Barosh and the Rosh lived, that's the lands of the Rhineland. Uh, uh, wasn't that the place? Barom, Germania, but Germany, Sfas, France, but Italia and Italy, Lo Hexia Lo Hemlock. They closed the door and wouldn't let the Torah have a place anymore. Esta uh, Lasehem, Bifneha Torah, Lopis, because they not open the door to the Torah anymore. The Jews had been. That era had passed. As Naga Torah Kafiha Noeg, who we call Mishihu Achar Makrav Shvikaze. So, what is the terrorist um, uh, tactic faced with such circumstances? Well, it's a co, a leho, a mukamas, a cherim, but it's a went to and transferred itself to other places. Right, it couldn't go to Italy anymore. Time was over, time was up. It had to transfer its ownership to something, some one else in somewhere else. But Litton, Lithuania, Poland, Poland, and Hungary, and Hungary. And these became the great centers of Torah. Mazeris, in Perusha Davka Chazeris, it would go, it would, it would peddle its wares, if that's not uh, too unflattering. Elsewhere, El Magzira Paneha Kishin, Machnisa Isa Panima, it would go to new places. Mashum Kachoya Maura Vakara Le Vilna, it would therefore would come to Vilna, Chetishma Eser Chomba, Husam Masarim, where its traditions would be protected, and on and on. It's a beautiful idea. The Torah always goes and passes from generation to generation. It passes to a person in the generation who can occupy the same role as Moshe Rabbeinu. There is always somebody who can occupy that role. He's not the same as Moshe Rabbeinu. You can't compare if they were living at the same time to each other. But he's going to be, as I said in the shared just a few weeks ago, perfect for your generations. The leaders of our generations are the greats of our generations, who are the greats uh, relative to our generation, that Rabbi Kiva Eger or, or the, the, the whatever, Rashi or whatever, uh, Ramban, Ramban were to their generations. An interesting idea. But who it is 
who that person is, is somebody who worked on himself to become the great of the generation. Even if you're the greatest Yikon in the world, even your Moshe Rabbeinu's children, Hashem says, no, no, no. It goes to Yeshua. And don't worry, the sun doesn't set from one, on one leader of Klal Yisrael, until the next leader has already been selected and his son started to rise. I shall hopefully see you again next week. Have a very good Shabbos.